Hi, this is Ed Gregory for PhotosInColor.com and today I'm going to show you how to use the radial filter in Lightroom. Okay, so the radial filter in Lightroom is pretty simple but massively powerful. So basically, if you imagine settings that you, that you make in Lightroom, it basically does it all over the entire image and that's it. Okay, you process the whole thing. So you make it brighter, everything goes brighter. You edit the shadows, all the shadows get made brighter or darker or whatever. The radial filter, what that does is it means that you can target areas either. So if it's round and the image is square, so you might say inside this circle, make these effects, these changes. Or you might say outside of this area, make these changes. Okay, so, and you can, do so many things with it. So let's jump into Lightroom and I'll show you exactly how this works. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. We are in the develop module over here. And we, we're using this image today of Drew Mason, Drew Mason, a hoopla, yep. He knows what that means, you might not. He's a great actor from the UK. Anyway, let's look over here and we're going to use the radial filter, which is this one in the top right hand corner over here. All you have to do for this, you can hit Shift M and it's gonna load that automatically, nice and simple. So what does this do? First of all, if we just come in, it's set to custom and let's say all your settings are at zero, okay? Basically, you can draw a circle anywhere. So if we draw a circle around Drew's face here, okay? This is what we're going to be affecting. So let's just change the exposure to zero, okay? So we can see that anything outside this circle is being affected, okay? That's really simple to, to look at. And what we have here, okay, we can do the, the temperature and the tint, so this is the white balance. And then we basically have the basic panel just here with the clarity and saturation. And then we also have some of other effects down here. And then the final one is color, where you can set a color to be overlaid. So let's look at how this really works. Okay, so at the moment, obviously we set it put the exposure down to zero. We can also go the other way and put the exposure all the way up. And you can see it's affecting outside the circle. But down here, you can click invert mask and watch this. It's affecting what's inside the circle, hence Drew has now pretty much disappeared, but the outside has stayed the same. So let's bring it back to the other way. And then we have this setting, which is feather, okay? So this is adds um, kind of how soft the edge of the area is is so if we for example were to boost the feather up okay it's going to make this edge really soft and if we were to go the other way okay it's going to make it a solid edge if we come out of this you can see a solid edge is what has happened now let's come back into this to help you with this if you hit zero oh um oh, not zero the letter o it's going to bring up your mask anything in red is what has been affected so you can see it's red most red here it's right here. And if we were to bring the feather all the way back the other way, you're going to see this is where the mask is. This is what's been affected and nothing inside is. So if we set the feather somewhere in the middle, you can see it's blurring. Okay. So we've, if we hit O, it's going to set back to actually what the effects are doing. That's basically it. And we can use any of these effects. So if we were to change the contrast, okay, outside of this circle, it's going to boost the contrast and we can reduce the highlights or ex make the highlights more extreme. We can also change the tint. So we can, uh, on the outside, make it very yellow, whereas on the inside, keep it its regular color. And these sliders work just like in the rest of Lightroom. Now you might be wondering, well, okay, why, what if I'd want it to be different to just this circle? Well, amazingly, in Lightroom CC and Lightroom 6, you can actually do really powerful things because we have this thing called the brush. Okay, so let's make an example of this. I want, for example, everything outside of his, I want, I don't know how to explain this, his mouth to be the only thing which is lit. Okay, like so. But I've also decided I want the eyes to be included. Now, if I click brush, okay, and then I can hit erase, and I can actually, if I hit O, so that you can see this is my mask. I can actually go on here. If I put my flow to 100, I can erase the mask over the eyes. 
Now, if I hit O again so you get rid of the mask, now you can see that different areas have been brought in. Now, again, pretty useless for the image that I've just done, but let's actually use this in a real scenario so we can see what we might do with this. So basically what I want to do to this image is let's just make a really quick edit here. I'm going to warm it up slightly, uh, boost the shadows, reduce the highlights, make the blacks come in a little bit and lift the whole thing. That looks pretty good to me as like a very quick edit. But what I want to happen is I want his eyes to stay like this, which is super sharp. Oh, well, it's not perfect actually in this image, but pretty sharp. And but then I want the hair here to actually be more blurred than it is to make the face stand out and also dark in this area. Now, what I could do is I could go to brush and just brush all that in. But if I hit radial filter, I draw Drew's face like so. And then what I do is I take my sharpness down to zero. Watch here, it's all now gone blurry, which is looking really fantastic. I'm also gonna make it a little bit darker However, you can see that what's happened here is it's darkened his hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the shadows back up because his shadow, his hair is darker than the background. That's going to lift those a little bit. And that's starting to look really great. Now, if I hit O, you can see that actually it's darkened some of his mouth and jawline down here. But I actually want this underneath his chin to be out of focus and this in focus. So we can use this by taking the brush and we're gonna hit erase, okay? And we're gonna take the feathering down so the edge isn't gonna be quite as soft. And I'm going to literally draw around here, around Drew's jawline, like so, and around his face. And now all of his face isn't going to go blurry at all. I am now going to increase the feathering and take the flow down so it's not going to delete it completely. And I'm just going to blur this edge in a, a little bit wider so I can kind of see what's going on. I think that's going to start looking great. And I can actually go outside of the circle to do this. And if I hit O and come back, I think it's gone too dark as well. So let's bring up that darkness just a little bit there. And then let's come out of this here. And we can see that now if we come back to history and we just show, oh, hold on, I want to go back here before the radial filter. Okay, this was the before the radial filter, we added the radial filter and the image straight away is just starting to really pop and look amazing. Now, amazingly, you can add as many of these as you want. So for example, I might want his face to be even sharper than what it is now. So I can select his face like so. Let's have a look at the masking, okay? And if I go to invert, and it's now going to just do his face like so, it's probably quite good at that. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to boost the sharpness and boost the clarity. And if we look at that, I quite like what that's done. I'm also going to just lighten it that little tiny bit and come out of this. And now this image is starting to really take shape by using a couple of radial filters. Now, if we come back here over to this side here, because I want to bring it back a little bit for you so that you can actually go and have a look here with the before looks really nice. It's a great clean image. However, we've got to this just using radial filters. So that's the basics of the radial filter in Lightroom CC. Now, if you liked this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and why not subscribe? Or maybe you've got some questions. Ask me the questions below, type it in. I always get back to you and it, sometimes within minutes, okay? Thank you so much for watching. This was Ed Gregory for Photos in Color.